In this video, we're going to look at the most important topology in power electronics and its major usage, which is space vector modulation. How this modulation is done and why it is so closely connected to one topology, we'll find out within the next minutes. So, what is the most important topology in power electronics? It is this half bridge comprising two transistor switches, also known as leg. With just three of those legs, we get the three-phase inverter and its most commonly utilized variant, the voltage source inverter. Where's the voltage source? It is right here. And we call it DC link voltage, because it is the link between a feeding source, usually a three-phase voltage system, and our inverter. This leg, which I honored by naming it the most important topology in power electronics has, and this might surprise you, just two states of operation. State 1, which is actually the name to describe the state. The upper switch is closed, the lower switch is open. Please note that we can fully substitute our transistor diode combination for a simple switch. And if you wonder why do we need two power electronic switches, transistor and diode, for one simple switch, then remember that our power electronic switches are DC switches, being able to conduct current only in one direction. The important thing here is that in state 1, an outgoing current leaves via the turned on IGBT red, while an ingoing current enters via its anti parallel diode, also red. In both cases, for outgoing and ingoing currents, we know that the potential out is connected to the upper potential, which is plus DC link voltage. State 1 makes the out potential plus VDC. State 0. The lower switch is closed, the upper switch is open. State 0 makes the out potential minus VDC. There are no in-between potentials for out. Out is either plus VDC or minus VDC. End of story. Well, almost. What happens if we turn both switches off? This is the question mark state, which I refer to as passive zero. Basically, it's the inverter disconnected from out. The last thinkable state is the X state. It is forbidden. I'm sure you'll find out why. In order to assemble an inverter, we need three half bridges. We connect a three-phase motor to it while having the entire inverter in off-mode or question mark state. As just mentioned, this is basically the motor disconnected from the inverter with one exception though. The diodes will clamp any voltages across A, B and C regardless of their polarity to the DC link voltage. However, this is not a state we should spend much time with right now. We move to the first defined state and we keep in mind, from now on there will be only defined states. First one is triple zero. A, B and C are short-circuited to each other, forcing an active zero voltage on them. Drawing the voltages in the voltage plane will not be difficult. Since all voltages are zero, it is getting crowded at the origin of the plane. Now we add up three zero vectors and still there's nothing but zero. Triple zero means short-circuited motor or active zero voltage. We change states by switching one leg. Our next state is one double zero or in agent speak one double O. The voltages across the motor windings require our attention now. Detaching the motor produces the following circuit. The DC link voltage is applied across A and connected B and C. This is a voltage divider. Assuming a symmetrical motor, VDC is divided into positive two-third VDC for coil A and two negative one-third VDCs for coils B and C. Please do not confuse my positive and negative assignments with the actual voltage in this given circuit. The sign refers to whether the DC voltage points from the ending of a coil to the star, in that case I designate it as positive, or the voltage points in the opposite direction, then it is negative. 
Actually, we need those signs because we are going to draw these voltages in this voltage plane. Well, positive A voltage means we draw it in positive A direction, which is 0 degrees. Its value? 230C link, of course. Now we have two negative 130C link voltages for B and C. Since B positive has an angle of plus 120 degrees, the negative B direction is minus 60 degrees. The same goes for C accordingly. So we have these two negative one-third voltages. Now we add all these voltage pointers to get a resulting space vector. The addition of the two blue voltage pointers leads to the black arrow. Funny, but its length is also one-third DC link. Now black and red added results in the green pointer. This is the voltage space vector for state 100. Next state. The middle leg changes its switching state, double one zero. We have seen in the previous state how to determine the corresponding voltage vector. This time the voltage across A and B are positive, but their value is one third. The two third voltage appears now across C, but negative. Again, adding that one third voltages from A and B first, we're getting the black vector. Now we add this to the blue minus C voltage. This results in the green 110 voltage space vector with its length of VDC at an angle of plus 60 degrees. Next state, triple one. Technically it's equal to triple zero connecting three windings to each other, forcing an active zero on them. However, we got there by switching just one switch instead of returning to triple zero by switching two switches. That is why we need that state just as we need the triple zero state. The result is equal though. The voltage space vector is zero. By switching the third leg, we go back to double one zero. Switching the second leg, we get one double zero. And finally, we return to triple zero. That was a full cycle. We are back to where we started. Okay, with this general switching pattern, we covered one sector, which is sector one, the first sector. How to get into the remaining other sectors? That is not difficult. We need different switching states. And there are many unused we haven't touched yet. Starting with triple zero, we switch the middle leg. This is the state zero, one, zero. Constructing the corresponding voltage vector is simple. Coil B gets positive to 30 C link, red arrow. A and C are negative, one third now. Adding them up and it results in the vector zero, one, zero. Okay, that was child's play. Now we look at the basic patterns that tell us how to serve all six sectors using one special sequence for every sector. Sector 1. This is the one we already looked at in detail. So there shouldn't be any surprises. What is important? The return to triple zero as the starting and transfer state to another sector. What also should be considered? To change a state by switching one transistor, we enter three sectors starting left and three sectors starting right. Right means the first state after triple zero gives the voltage vector that borders the operated sector on its right side. Left obviously means the opposite. Therefore, even sectors are start left sectors and odd sectors are start right sectors. Now we are in transition state, triple zero. From here we could go to any sector, but that wouldn't make much sense because we want to produce a continuously rotating voltage space vector. That is why we enter sector two after sector one. Since it is a start left sector, we start with zero one zero. The rest shouldn't be rocket science. Just watch the full walkthrough.
How do I actually work on one sector? The sector we'll be looking at is sector 1. Within the time frame of one transistor switching period, a switching voltage vector is created with a switching sequence in the sector. We start with our triple zero vector. Nothing happens with everything being zero. Then we enter state 1 double zero and the voltage vector is integrated over time while this state is active. With transition to state 110, the integrated voltage changes course because now the 110 vector is integrated over time. State 111 stalls the further voltage vector integration because zero voltage does not accumulate over time. Going back to state 110 lets the voltage vector further grow in the direction of 110. A return to state 100 changes the integration course again. Now we are going in the direction of 100. The state 000 finalizes the first sector switching sequence. 000 stalls the voltage integration again until the transistor switching period is over. Now we can look at the resulting space vector which we created over the course of one period. It is the green voltage vector. For a mains frequency of 50 Hz and a switching frequency of 10 kHz, this would cover a differential angle of 1.8 degrees. So for the next 1.8 degrees, we need a new voltage vector. It makes sense to give it the same length as to the previous vector, but that and also the rotational speed can be changed, especially if high dynamic drives are the target of our control.